So this week's uh, new apparatus, besides the Rotovap, is the cold finger, and I'll show you how you use a cold finger. So very quickly, this goes to vacuum over here, and we'll be hooking that up shortly. Uh, this is the actual cold finger here, so let me move this out of the way and hold this up for you. That goes on the inside of that test tube. Now, you're going to pull a vacuum on the, on the outside using this connector, and then cold water goes in one side, and warm water will come out the other. That will get the cold water to be concentrated down in this region and then it'll work its way up. And as, as it works its way up, it'll be warming up. So that's the idea of the cold finger. You'll stick this to the inside of here, connect cold water, outlet water. This just goes into the sink or if we have, if you have a pump, sometimes you'll hook it up to the uh, return of a pump and actually use a like a little refrigerator chiller to uh, keep the water super cold. This part will go to a vacuum line. And in this classroom, you have to remember that we have to turn the vacuum on, so you should check that before you try to do this. Now the other aspect of this is how do you get a sample into the cold finger? So I put a sample in here. And this needs to be evaporated. A cold finger is never used with liquid on the inside. So I also, um, we've been goofing around a little bit, and you can see there's a little bit of uh, product that is up on the top of the cold finger. This is actually caffeine that I just took from the bottle. So what I'll, I'll go ahead and do is use a little extra solvent to rinse, try to rinse that out. Now. Be careful how you do this because if you accidentally allow solution to go down this way, like you have it tilted the wrong way, uh, then what ends up happening is you're losing product. So I, w I usually want all of the material down at the bottom of the cold finger. Uh, if you have a lot of material, you'd spread it out a little bit more. And now what we're gonna do actually is evaporate this solvent from the inside. Now typically what I would have students do is just use an airstream with a pipette on a hose pointing down in here and then I would just, because this is methylene chloride, I would just have them warm it up with their hand. That would be enough to, to get the solvent to evaporate and at the same time you have to turn it because what you want to happen is you want the material that needs to be purified to be spread out around the bottom of this uh, vacuum test tube is really what it is. Okay, so instead of doing that, what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the Rotovap. And so let me go over there and set that up. So hopefully you've watched the earlier video or the other video for this week on using the Rotovap. This is a clip that I talked about. And the way this clip works is it, it goes, you notice there's a big end and a small end. The big end goes on the bigger piece of glassware you just push that down. That'll keep that from falling off. Now you notice we still have this open area here that we have to worry about. And so what you'll need to do is plug it up. And at the Rotovap, you'll find this small section of hose that looks like this. And the, the hose actually has a metal bead in one end to, to block it. And so all you need to do is plug this in. You don't need to put it on too far. But now you have this plugged, you have your sample in here, and then you'll begin rotating it. Now, when you're doing this, you have to be careful about how quickly you turn on the vacuum, because if you turn it on too quickly, it will bump. It, viol it will violently boil. So I'm gonna start turning it on just in the partially open position, and you'll hear it. Or maybe you'll hear it, it might be too far from the camera. So I have that vacuum, it's being pulled, I'm making sure my vacuum is sealed. I'll feel it down here to see if it's getting cold. If it's getting cold, I know I'm starting to get a vacuum in here. The vacuum isn't instantaneous because that large 
uh, glassware uh, volume has to be evacuated for the vacuum to be created, right? So it does feel like it's getting colder. I'm gonna turn it up just a little bit. And what you'll see in here is you'll see the solid begin to form at the very top of where the liquid is touching if you're actually evaporating solvent. Now you can warm this with your hand. I'm gonna try a little bit more vacuum. Make sure that it's well sealed. That's the tricky part on here. So I'll pause this while it works. So you can see, I just wanted to show you this while it works. You can see how there's a white line here. That's the solvent evaporating. The vacuum took a while to establish just because I don't want to run it too fast. If you run it too quickly, it'll bump for sure. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to increase my rotation rate. Like I said, um, our water bath in this one's not working. But you can just warm it up with your hand if you want to. You'll be amazed at how cold it gets. It might take a little extra time. Uh, but you don't want this to bump. I think the total process for this might take you, I don't know, 10 minutes at the most. We actually have two of these devices, and so we can run both of them at the same time. So I'm going to leave that, and I'll come back when it's done. Well, it's almost done so you can see what it looks like. Now, how do you know when it's completely done? Because you can't really see in there right now, right? So here's how you'll actually uh, know that most of the solvent is gone, and you might want to go a little bit longer. The glass, as long as uh, solvent is evaporating, the glass stays cold. As soon as the solvent stops evaporating, and you have your hand down here on the glass, then your hand will warm the glassware up back to room temperature. And I'm not grabbing this, I'm just holding my open hand or using a small uh, amount of uh, pressure just to keep my fingers on it, but I'm not trying to stop it from rotating. I'm not trying to, don't try to generate heat by friction with your finger or anything like that. If this thing breaks and you're holding it, then that's gonna be some problem but it shouldn't break unless you uh, try to do something you shouldn't. Pretty sure that is completely evaporated. Now, there, it could also be a little water uh, residual in your product, and you might see some of that uh, come out as well, but I don't think you will. This solvent is methylene chloride, so you'll run ice in the ice trap to try to capture some of it. And that waste goes in, that goes into the halogenated waste. All right, so I'll stop that. All right, so we're getting ready to set all this up. So here's the cold finger. Uh, and you'll assemble it by just inserting this carefully in here. Now, you're gonna to have to carefully remove that as well. You notice that the cold finger goes all the way down like this into the glassware, and that's where all your product will be, down at the end where all the uh, white crystals are down here. Okay, so then um, you're gonna to wanna to clamp this. The kind of clamp that we use is called a three-fingered clamp. I should probably use a slightly larger one with this, but you can you can grab it like this, squeeze it. The way, best way to put these on is to put it on and squeeze it. Now, if you have a larger three-finger clamp, it'll actually clamp around here. Okay. This Remember, this is your vacuum line. This is your inlet water, outlet water over here. So don't screw those up, because you put water in here, then you're gonna have a hard time because all the water will go in with your sample. 
Now what I'll do is I'll put this onto a ring stand um, and I have to set up a couple other things. I've got an ice bath. I'll show you all that here in just a second. So here's the uh, water bath. Uh, this has ice and about 20 feet of hose in it. And then the water goes trickling through here very slowly. And the water that comes out of here is pretty cold. If you need to be colder, you get ice. This is not an ideal situation. Uh, normally, and maybe we'll get this set up, I would just put a fish tank pump in here, pump the water out of here into your inlet of your cold finger, and then, then the, bring the water back out to here. And then I don't have to waste all this water uh, through here, because this is just going to end up going back into the sink somewhere, okay? So you'll, you'll go into the, to the instrument room, get one of these plastic bins, fill it with ice. This is good for everyone to use. Um, so I have this set up and I'll get it hooked up. When you hook it up, you don't want the water running. So you'll want to turn it off. And then I'll, I'll, you'll notice as I turn this thing on, this kind of pump has this anti-siphon, ice siphon uh, thing going on here. And a lot of times you'll turn it on, you'll see all this water that's sprayed out here. That's normal, unfortunately. So let me get these things hooked up and you can see me uh, do the sublimation of the pump. Water running, you can actually see it frosting up on the top here. That cold is going down into here, into the uh, there's an inner tube on the cold finger and then returning on the outside of the cold finger. Um, I'm gonna also um, turn the vacuum on. I turned the vacuum on earlier. You should always check to make sure it's on. You can hear that pulling. I turned it on earlier because it takes a little bit of time uh, for the uh, the vacuum to establish in the room. And then now I'm going to open this thing up all the way. So there should be a good vacuum being pulled in here. This should make a good tight seal. You will not get that off. You will not get that part off uh, while the vacuum's on. Okay. Now. As far as flow rate for water, um, that's probably okay. Uh, you could go a little bit higher. Um, right now, this is not working that great, but I think that's kind of normal for this room. The, the higher the flow rate, uh, the colder the water that comes through. Um, you can also see there's air bubbles traveling through all my hose here. Now, I don't know uh, where all the hoses are kept, uh, we can often, if this water is returning cold, which it's coming out of here cold, we often chain a couple of different students setups together. But this water coming in here is very cold. And so we're almost, almost ready to get started. The vacuum's on. Um, the other thing is, I'm going to be using a regular size Bunsen burner for this, but actually there's a, something called a micro burner, which is only about half this size and puts out maybe one quarter of the heat. And that's actually what you want for this. So here's the big warning. Um, if there are any organic solvents present in the room, you cannot do this. So all the ether, if we have ether out, or the acetone, or the ethanol, or methanol, anything that's flammable uh, needs to be put away. Um, most likely, we'll do this part on a separate day so we can avoid any sort of uh, conflicts in safety and lab schedule. Okay, so let me get the Bunsen burner struck and then we'll go ahead and start the sublimation process. Okay, so uh, we're ready to go. There's a Bunsen burner. You can see the flames on kind of low. It's going to be a little bit tricky because um, normally I just use a smaller burner and I can leave it a little more open. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start heating this. And you'll notice I'm holding the Bunsen burner and the reason I'm doing that is so that I don't um, uh, overheat any one particular spot on the sample. And then I can move it around like this. And you can see there's already some stuff going on in here. So let me move this in a little bit closer. And we'll zoom in just a bit. So the idea is to warm the sample slowly from all sides. But with 
with this Bunsen burner, I don't have quite the control that I would like. I don't know if you can see how thick the wall is on this test tube. It's pretty thick. Now you don't want to do the sublimation um, too quickly because if you do it too quickly, it'll end up splattering. And when it splatters, it'll take material from the from the impure sample on the outside, and then uh, basically carry it up to your sample that you want to be pure. Um, it looks like, if you can see this, it's already clear on the bottom over here. I think I've been overly focused on that side. What's happening though is, as I heat this sample and the heat gets uh, to the caffeine, which is what this is, it begins to sublime and as it sublimes, it'll uh, reach that cold finger and it deposit at that point there. Now, I might have put a little bit too much caffeine in here. Um, I didn't actually, wasn't actually able to weigh it when I did it. A little difficult with this big burner to get to the back side. I don't like leaving my arm like that. you can see but the tip of the cold finger is kind of fuzzy and that's actually the deposited caffeine from the sample and again this is a little bit hard to do this month's burner is just a little too big but it works I'm a oh a little bit too fast maybe uh, it did that because I got it hot enough I think it started melting which is not a big deal but I heat it, and if I see something happen, I pull back. Uh, part of the reason for doing that is this glass is thick, so when you heat it, there's this long delay between when the heat actually reaches the sample on the inside. Is my cold water still cold? Let me double check. Yeah, it's not as cold as I'd like it to be, but it's still cool. I kind of think maybe a uh, you should, you're gonna have to check the hoses periodically to make sure the water's still flowing. I think the pressure varies a lot. Yeah, the water flow rate's gone way down, so I'm gonna just crank that up just a little bit. Um, the danger of not having it cold enough is that as it sublimes, I don't know if you can see this up here, there's stuff trying to escape. It'll go straight out into your vacuum. And that can happen if you heat too fast, if the water's not cold enough. Um, but I think that's done. I don't know if you can tell, there's very little at the bottom here. You see the air bubbles coming through because I changed it. And you see that that actually knocked the product off of the cold finger. It's not a big deal, you can get it to go back up pretty easy, um, but you'll just have to be aware of things like that will happen. The 
heat that up. I do want to capture those, I think, just so you can see how it looks. Like I say, you don't have, like that little bit, you could probably let it just go. You see these little needles on here. Don't touch that, by the way, it's hot. You can see those needles out there. Those needles are the caffeine crystals. All right, so I think we're good. Um, I'm gonna get ready to disassemble this. I need to move the camera a little bit for it so it's easier for you to see, so I'll come back right back. Um, let's get a little side note here. Um, I'm gonna let that cool uh, back down. The glass on the outside is, you know, ho as hot as that you would expect it to be after touching it with their flame. Um, and I need to let that radiate some heat off. And then after that, I will slowly release the vacuum. Um, because if you release the vacuum too quickly, what will end up happening is your sample will get blown off by the air coming in. So you just gotta be a little bit careful with that. And I'll show you how I would do it. And then um, I'm sure there's better ways, but I'll show you how I'll do it. 